Good morning. Mm. I've been awake almost two hours and out of bed for about an hour and 20 minutes. Crazy, isn't it? It's 3.33 in the morning. I know. And I didn't go to bed till 11, which means I didn't even get three hours of sleep last night. But I am going back to bed as soon as I finish this video this morning. I decided to get it done and then go back and lay down. Anyway, that's all introduction. <sighs> Yesterday's, the, the videos over the past few days have created some degree of controversy based on my statement that I made in Sunday's talk at the New Way, uh, unless you love it all, you do not love at all. And then I did the light workers on the dark side in the follow-up on Monday. And when I did yesterday's video, what I was meditating on was loving everyone. And I was relating that to the previous two days. I know when I when I put the comments in um, in yesterday's video, I actually changed to the correct quotation, but originally my comment uh, as a description of the video was about loving yourself, loving everyone or, or not loving everyone. And the issue is really a whole lot more than that because quite frankly, we cannot love everything that people do. Some things that people do, many things that people do, simply are destructive in their very nature. Having said that, however, I wrestle with the realization that some of these, quote, destructive things in my life have given me some of the greatest revelations. They've helped me see who I am. So there is a gift even in the negative things that people do. But that doesn't mean that we have to just lay down and accept whatever people do and let people walk all over us and treat us poorly and play the role of victim over and over again. Nathan is absolutely right. We cannot love it all in the respect of accepting everything. And there are several people, not just Nathan, but several people that objected to the idea that we allow everything. The truth of the matter is we don't have a choice because, in, well, that's not true. <laughs> we don't have a choice to correct what's already happened, but we do have a choice to correct how we perceive what happened. And I will say emphatically that I have gone back and looked at things that happened in my life that I thought were hell on earth when I was going through them. I mean, I was horrified by some of the things that I experienced. And yet, having gone through them and looking back with hot 20, my 2020 hindsight, as I said earlier, they provided me with some of the greatest impetus for my own personal growth and my understanding of things, my understanding of mostly of me. Because I am learning to love everyone. Yes, even the dark, the dark workers the light workers on the dark side, even, even those that do the dastardly things, I'm learning to appreciate the fact that they are providing the ingredients, if you will, necessary to catalyze our growth. But, and, by the same token, for example, the government and the way we've been governed, and the bankers, and the financial system. I absolutely am a stalwart supporter 
of standing up to the system and saying no more. I'm a stalwart supporter if you're in a relationship where you're being abused. You need to draw a line and you need to say no more abuse. If you're going to keep abusing me, you've got to you've got to either fix that and stop it or I can't have you in my world because I don't choose to suffer anymore. I don't want to be a masochist anymore. I'm tired of playing the role of a slave and a masochist who just takes whatever is dished out to me. And I'm encouraging people all the time to stand up for your freedom, to stand up for your unalienable or unalienable rights as a sovereign son or daughter of the living God. To awaken spiritually, to recognize the gift in everything, even the dastardly things, even the terrible things that happen, we would not awaken were it not for some of those things happening. That's just the way it is. We would not awaken. And, and sometimes calamity, oftentimes calamity, brings out the very best in people. So there is a good side even in the dark and so-called evil side of things. That's a reality that I'm sharing with you and inviting you to see because it's important from my perspective that we get this thing, that life is not something that happens to us, but it's a perfect reflection of what is going on inside. And when we became disconnected in our consciousness from God, from ourself and from each other, everything became distorted. And we have the opportunity at this time to see clearly what's been going on. And we need to see it clearly and we need to take a stand. Love does not mean acceptance. We don't have to continue to accept our role as a victim. We don't need to do that. We don't need to continue to accept our role as a victimizer on the other side of the coin. We can make new choices. And love is making new choices. It's not acquiescing and saying, oh, well, everything is wonderful, everything is good, I have to love it all. No. We love it all in the sense that we see the meaning and how it has been created. That's how we love it all. I would never, never, never advocate violence, killing, stealing from people. I can understand why people do some of those things, especially the stealing part. But the truth of the matter is in our world, the stealing is done by people that have gotten away with it scot-free for years and years and years. When I say years, I should really be saying millenniums, groups of thousand-year periods. It's been going on that long that the elite or the ruling class playing the dark side, light workers on the dark side, have been stealing from the people. But the only reason they've been able to do that, the only reason they've been able to do that is because the people were ignorant and didn't know what was going on. And that's true of all of us virtually our entire lives. It's only been in the last 10 to 20 years or so that, that many people are waking up. Really, since, since the late 1980s, I think the wake up started. Although I was waking up, my God, I was waking up in the late 70s, early 80s. I was already getting flashes of certain things that were going to ultimately change my life as I allowed the process of discovery within myself.
as I was looking at the paradoxes way early on, way in the 70s, I was looking at the paradoxes and trying to make sense out of them. And so when, when you react to the fact that, Ron, I can't love it all. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be in that negative energy anymore. I don't want to live my life that way. Yay! I don't want you to either, and neither does God. I'm convinced of that. Now, one of the things that I was meditating on this morning is Jesus said, if somebody wants to take your coat, give them your cloak also. If somebody compels you to go a mile, go with them two miles. If a man strikes you on the cheek, turn your other cheek to him as well. And it's things like that that I think are misunderstood. And, and Jesus, I'm sorry, but I'm not willing to let them crucify me again or burn me at the stake or any of the other things that, I've, that I think I've gone through in past lives. I'm not willing to do that anymore. And I don't think humanity needs to do that anymore. I think it's time that we stand in our power and we say to the world around us, I'm not going to create this role anymore. I've, I've learned my lesson from this role of, of victimizer victimhood. I've learned my lesson from it and I'm not gonna play that game anymore. That's not who I am. That's not who I choose to be anymore. And while I'm talking to you, Jesus, thank you for what you did. What you did woke a lot of people up. Even though the religions screwed everything up after you were here, a lot of people awakened because of your love, because of your willingness to turn the other cheek and to allow yourself to be crucified. And some people don't even believe you did that, but I do. I've never stopped believing that. And I do know this, that in your death I died, in your death we all died. It's an archetypal reality, even if it was not a historical one, but I do believe it was an historical one. Nevertheless, it's time that we rise to a new level and stop playing the victim-victimizer roles. Stop it. We as humans need to stop that, and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to empower the human race on both sides, the light side and the dark side, which are illusions, I know. They are temporal experiences, not eternal realities. I know that. And I'm asking, I'm asking the Christ, the Spirit of that is the eternal son of the living God, the firstborn of all creation, the Christ, not an individual Jesus, but the Christ that is all of us, that is represented in each of us. I'm asking that to come alive and awake so that we can learn the lessons of what unconditional love is all about and stop at the same time laying down and just accepting everything that is as the way it is, because we need to change the way it is. The way it is and the way it has been is not good enough. It doesn't cut it anymore for humanity. It doesn't feel right in our soul. And I say that to God, and I say it to the God in each of you, to the goddess in each of you, the divine part of us, the flame of freedom that burns in us. I say it, I'm talking to that part of us. And Nathan, I'm sorry that you felt offended. I know you kept saying you didn't take it personally, but that isn't what your response looked like. But anyway, I ask you for forgiveness and I do it again publicly, again on the video. I did not mean to twist your words. And I know that's what it appeared that I did. It was not intentional. I didn't mean to twist my own words. That was not intentional either. But I hope that this video clarifies the issue and that each of you that were troubled by what I said finds a place of peace within yourself because that's all important for each of us and for all of us. Thank you. God bless you. Namaste. Have a beautiful day.